If you ever thought about moving to the Oregon coast, uh, we get a lot of the same questions over and over again. Uh, where are some of the best places to move to? Where's all the shopping at? Where are the hospitals? What's close to airports? Um, where can I find like a bigger lot? You know, w what if I want water views? You know, what does that look like? What do some of those costs look like? In this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions. And if you ever thought about building your own home, stick around to the end. I'm going to cover that as well. Hey everyone, Seth Marchant with the Home Team Brokers here. If you're new to this channel, Living on the Oregon Coast, we show you what it's like to eat, sleep, play, work, all the pros and cons of living on the Oregon Coast. And in this video, I'm gonna help you, especially if you've never been to the Oregon Coast or maybe you've only been a few times, I'm gonna show you uh, and give you some ideas as to how you can kind of narrow down your search. Make sure and hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, that way you'll get notified each time we release a new video. We get people reaching out to us all the time that wanna move along the Oregon coast. Again, this video is designed to kinda of answer some of those questions. But if you're one of those people and you do have more questions, you can give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or you can even click the link below in the description if you wanna schedule a Zoom. Typically best for people coming out of state. That's a good place to start uh, for a little meet and greet and to get a, a better feel for what you're looking for. All right, so uh, like I said, uh, we get a lot of uh, similar questions over and over again. Um, I'm kind of going to start from maybe some of the more common questions, and at the end, I'll talk to you a little bit about building your own home, if you ever thought about building your own home. I know that's uh, an aspiration for a lot of people. It can be very tricky, so I'm going to give you uh, some of my thoughts on that and what that looks like in this market and maybe some of the steps that you would go through to do that. All right, so first thing we're going to start with, one of the most common things that people want when they're moving to the Oregon coast is they want a water view, right? <laughs> Who doesn't, obviously? Um, for some people, uh, this is a deal breaker. Some people say, I absolutely have to have water view, um, whether I'm actually on the water, like beachfront, or I've just got some place, like maybe back up in the hills, there's a lot of places on the Oregon coast, um, or maybe up on a cliff somewhere where you can have some amazing uh, water views. And th the thing about uh, water views, of course, is, is they do command a premium. Uh, having a water view, even if it's what you call a peekaboo view, uh, which is like you can, you can see just a slice of the ocean or a slice of the water somewhere um, along the Oregon coast. There's a lot of lakes and rivers, too. So you're not just looking at coastal views. There's, there's lakes and rivers as well. Uh, but even if you just have like a little slice of a water view from one room and you can see just a partial piece of the coast, that does increase the value and the cost of a home dramatically. So getting those water views is definitely going to come at a price. Now waterfront, if you're right on the coast, that's going to command the most premium. That's going to be by far the most expensive. And of course, there's going to be uh, less inventory. There's fewer homes that are right on the coast than homes that you can find that might just have a water view, whether it's a, a full panoramic view or like I said, kind of like a peekaboo view. Now, it doesn't have to be too expensive. There are places that you can find along the Oregon coast. Typically, uh, if you're looking at something like a lake, there are a lot of lakes along the Oregon coast. A lot of cities um, are at the mouth of a river too, so you might have a water view on a lake or on the river. That's gonna be less expensive. And you can find some homes that are kind of in the, uh, I would say maybe just a slightly above a uh, starter um, home price point. So it's, it's not like um, you know these are million dollar views or, or, or it's a million dollar home that, that would necessarily have a water view. So if, if you do have a little bit more of a budget and you do wanna have a water view, it is possible. Um, it's just harder to find. A few good places to look, just kind of starting from north to south, uh, Astoria. Um, you can find uh, water views up on that hill in Astoria. If you've ever been to Astoria, you'll notice that, that big hill that overlooks the downtown. And the water view there is going to be the Columbia. Uh, you're not going to be able to see the ocean from there. Um, you'd have to go a little bit farther uh, 
a little bit farther west to actually be able to see the ocean. So all the water views in Astoria um, are going to be of the Columbia River, but there are a fair amount of homes that you can actually see the, the Columbia River, and, and a lot of them are kind of our peekaboo views because you'll have uh, another house or a tree or something obstructing your view, or, or the house just isn't, isn't exactly facing the right way to have a sort of a panoramic view. So these are mostly peekaboo uh, views, but you can find it in Astoria. There's a fair amount of lakes uh, around uh, Seaside, so you can find some water views uh, in Seaside that aren't too expensive. Again, uh, rivers along the Oregon coast. Otis, was, which is just a town just outside of Lincoln City, uh, you can find, uh, there's a fair amount of houses I've seen uh, on the market that are on the river there. Uh, Waldport is a little bit of a hidden gem. If, if you actually want to have an ocean view or maybe just like a bay view, uh, Waldport is going to be probably one of the more inexpensive places along the Oregon coast to have some water views. Other little towns like uh, on the Seussla River, you've got Mapleton. Um, there's a handful of houses kind of scattered throughout that area, area that are going to be right there on the river. Now once you kind of get inland too, and, and once you're on the river, that's also going to lower kind of the, the cost and the value of the home. So the further inland you go, it's good, the home is typically going to be less expensive. And then I would say maybe Coos Bay. Coos Bay might be one of the most inexpensive places along the Oregon coast. Uh, to have a water view. Again, that, that's going to be a bay view of, of the bay rather than uh, the actual ocean, but uh, there's a lot more population in Coos Bay, almost 25,000 people if you count North Bend too, so consequently there's a lot more houses there too. So if you're really looking for a water view, you're going to find probably more inventory and homes are just tend to be less expensive there. So the Coos Bay area is also a good place to find an inexpensive water view. Now beyond that, once you get further south, you're looking at Bandon, uh, Gold Beach and Brookings, not the cheapest places along the Oregon coast. There are a handful of places you can probably find homes that have, uh, again, probably peekaboo views. You're probably looking at views of either the Chetco River in Brookings or the Rogue River uh, in Gold Beach. You might find a few that are kind of back up in the hills that have some peekaboo ocean views that aren't too much above uh, the cost of a starter home. So you can find some inexpensive homes along the Oregon coast that have water views. They're just going to be fewer and far between, and you, you are going to pay for it, um, even if it is that peekaboo view, but you can still find some homes that aren't going to necessarily break, break the bank. Uh, if you have questions about that, best thing to do is to get with us, and we can kind of direct you to some of the better spots or inexpensive spots, or if you want that coastal view, um, usually that's usually more just a game of waiting because if you want to be right on the coast, there just aren't that many homes that are on the coast, uh, right? So it's just a matter of being patient, waiting for the right property, kind of knowing what, what you can afford and, and how often to expect something to come on the market. Again, best thing to do is to get with us. All right, shopping. Shopping is important to a lot of people. Uh, being close to bigger brand stores, your best shopping by far is going to be in the Astoria area, technically in Warrington, but uh, it's right kind of in between Warrington and Astoria. You've got Costco, a Walmart, and a Fred Meyer. Coos Bay and Newport also have a Walmart. If you're not from uh, Oregon or Washington, you might not be familiar with Fred Meyer. I don't think they have Fred Meyer's in California. Fred Meyer is kind of like a Walmart. It's like one of those stores that has groceries, home goods, uh, a garden center, maybe a little bit of automotive, kind, kind of everything. So Florence, Coos Bay, and Brookings all have Fred Meyers. A lot of these bigger towns will also have Safeways for your grocery shopping. Beyond that, you're looking at kind of the smaller mom and pop shops, which uh, would be like a Ray's or a McKay's. Um, I know it sounds similar, but uh, I don't know if they're owned by the same people. I wouldn't think so, but uh, Ray's and McKay's are probably the two or two smaller kind of mom and pop shops, uh, grocery stores that you would find along the Oregon coast. So if you really want to be close to, to bigger box shopping, uh, you will have to kind of choose carefully. Now a lot of towns are going to be, there's going to be a lot of towns that aren't maybe more than 15 or 20 or even 30 minutes from some of these bigger places like Coos Bay, like Florence, like Astoria. So if you're willing to drive a little bit, might not have to worry about it too much. But uh, again, if you really need, if that's really important to you, get with us and we can kind of pinpoint where those spots are. All right, now hospitals, particularly major hospitals. Now this is gonna usually a, qu a question that comes to us more for people that are retiring on the Oregon coast, more important for uh, people that are up there in the age demographic. Uh, and you're not gonna find major hospitals in every town. You'll find a major hospital in Astoria, which is Columbia Memorial Hospital. Heading south uh, beyond that, the next major hospital you're going to find uh, is in Tillamook. 
So that's a pretty big, big gap between Astoria and Tillamook. Now, most of these towns like um, uh, Manzanita, Seaside, Warrington, they typically have like an urgent care or something that's 24 hours. Not all of them do, but, but a lot of them do. But if you need to be within 20 or 30 minutes of a major hospital, that really does limit your options. Again, moving south uh, beyond Tillamook, Newport has a major hospital. Florence has a major hospital, Coos Bay has a major hospital, and then Gold Beach has a major hospital. Everything else is going to be smaller clinics, a few urgent cares scattered uh, throughout here and there. Um, Brookings does have a, a VA um, hospital too, so um, if that's something that's important to you. And Brookings is one of the top retirement areas along the Oregon coast, so good spot for a VA hospital. Our next big thing that people ask us about is airports. You do have smaller airports all up and down the Oregon coast. The only larger regional airport uh, in the or on the Oregon coast is uh, in North Bend, Coos Bay area, which is the Southwest uh, Oregon Regional Airport. I believe, uh, as I'm filming this right now, they're just running flights out of uh, Denver and San Francisco. That changes. Um, I know I've, I've talked to them in the past. They've they've been working on adding more flights. Um, so definitely check uh, when you if you see this video in you know, six months or a year you're down the road it might be different so definitely check with them just go to their website and uh, you can see what they have but right now just Denver and San Francisco a lot of people coming from the Bay Area so it's no surprise that uh, San Francisco is one of one of the the two places that currently they're offering uh, flights to and from now beyond that for uh, national or international airport obviously you have PDX which is up north and then there is an international airport in Medford which is southern Oregon. So if you're in Brookings the airport in Medford is about two and a half hours away. Gold Beach is about three hours away. Bandon a little bit farther than that. For central Oregon coast like a Florence uh, Eugene, there's an airport in Eugene, it's about just over an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes away. That's a regional airport, so those flights, they've got maybe a dozen flights when I checked recently. Um, so you're talking about SFO, LAX, um, I think Oakland, Burbank, so four places in uh, California, Seattle, um, Salt Lake City, Phoenix, Denver, they've got maybe a dozen or so regional flights. Again, make, make sure and check. Uh, because they might very well add or subtract video uh, flights when you when you see this video. So for people on the uh, Central Oregon coast, you might be able to get by with uh, getting to Eugene in an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Beyond that, you're looking at PDX from Portland. So you can get to PDX uh, to like say a seaside in an hour and a half to an Astoria in under two hours. Uh, Cannon Beach, same thing, about an hour and a half or so. If you need to go to PDX from like the Central Oregon coast, you're looking at more like a two and a half hour uh, drive. So nothing really is going to be too far. A lot of people usually don't like to go beyond two hours. You know, it's kind of like the magic mark for whatever reason. Um, so there won't be too many places that are going to be beyond two hours that, that you might need to, to get um, beyond regionally or just regionally. But uh, again, if, if you have questions about that, you can always check with us. Another common question we get about properties and, and trying to find a certain type of property along the Oregon coast is RV parking. There's not a ton of places um, necessarily that, that you're going to find consistently properties that go up for sale with RV parking. I do tend to find that the places that have an older demographic do tend to have properties that do have more RV parking. Uh, for example, Florence, um, Brookings, and Coos Bay, maybe maybe those are probably the top three or so. If you're if you're looking for a home or looking in the market and, and want to find a home that's going to have RV parking, now you can find a home with RV parking anywhere along the Oregon coast. It's just not that common. Uh, I checked uh, recently, and from say Astoria to um, maybe all the way down to like a Lincoln City, there was probably less than a dozen homes that listed that they had an RV space uh, on the property. So you can find it anywhere on the Oregon coast. It's just not that common. It's going to be more common in certain places like a Florence or a Brookings. Another question we get is lot size. People that want a larger lot. Uh, whether we're talking a quarter acre or half acre, which uh, an acre is about 44,000 square feet, so a quarter acre would be like 11,000 square feet. The average uh, lot for a home on the Oregon coast is probably somewhere around like six or 7,000 uh, square feet. Sometimes you can find a little bit less. Eight, nine, 10,000 square feet would kind of be a little bit above average. So once you kind of get to that quarter acre, you really start to narrow down. Uh, there's not nearly as many homes that are on a quarter acre and especially a half acre. Uh, anything beyond half acre and one acre, what you tend to end up seeing is 
those properties will tend to be inland a lot more, maybe like up one of those rivers, like I mentioned uh, earlier with water views. So you're really not finding much actually directly on the coast or, or like walkable to the coast that's gonna be an acre. You can find it here and there, it does exist. Those properties just don't tend to come in the market very often. And it's really gonna vary from uh, town to town. Probably a good rule of thumb is some of the smaller towns, um, like a Cannon Beach or a Manzanita where uh, all the homes are really kind of condensed around one area. You've got a lot of homes that are just all six, seven, maybe 8,000 square feet. And it's pretty rare to find a house with uh, 11,000 square feet or 22,000 square feet, which would, which would be a half acre. Again, you can find it, it exists. They're just few and far between and they don't come on the market very often. So if you're looking for a larger lot, we can definitely help you to find that, but um, you might have to narrow down quite a bit. And there's really kind of two types of people that tend to, uh, that, or two types of ways that people kind of narrow down properties when, when they're reaching out to us to move along the Oregon coast. It's, the first one would be people that are looking to be in a particular area. Uh, they want to be close to certain amenities, you know, close to certain shopping, or they like a certain town, they like the feel or a vibe of a certain town. So there's, there's people that are more area shopping and the area kind of takes priority. And then the, the house, the property that they buy, um, they might be able to, you know, forego some things, things that they want so that they can be in the area that they want to be in. And then there's certain people that are just property shopping. They want a very specific type of property. It's not very, um, it, you know, it's a scarce type of property. You, they're not abundant. You don't find them everywhere. And so people that are more kind of property shopping, uh, you tend to have to really broaden where you're looking. So you might be looking in multiple towns. You might be looking, you know, the entire Oregon coast or, or at least a few of the regions. You might be looking, you know, central to southern Oregon coast or northern to central Oregon coast. So. Um, figure out kind of if you're more property shopping and there's a specific type of property that you want that's not common like one of those larger lots or maybe you need an RV spot or you want to be coastal like right on the beach or have really great water views you know homes that there just aren't a lot of you might be property shopping instead of actually shopping in a particular area so narrowing down and figuring out if, if you're looking for a particular area or particular properties is really going to help you to kind of um, guide your search. All right, now the last thing I mentioned, building your own home. Who doesn't want to build their own home, right? Before I got into real estate, uh, I had sort of an idea or an aspirations of, of building my own home because, well, you know, you, you get it the way that you want. You know, you can, you can build it exactly the way that you want. You can choose all the finishes. You can choose, you know, how the home's laid out. All, you know, all that kind of perfect stuff. You know, you have visions of like the dream home. And um, building your own home can definitely be right for some people, uh, probably not the best for other people. And the, the first way I would kind of just distinguish between those two things is, uh, is this going to be your forever home? So if you're retiring, if this is gonna be the last home that you plan to live in, it can definitely make more sense to build your own home. The reason why it wouldn't make sense if you're not retiring or don't plan to live there forever, um, and, and those types of people are typically people that are still working or people that have kids. Those are kind of two of the major things that oftentimes get people to move or get somebody to uproot, you know, where they're living to go to another place. You know, a job takes you somewhere else or the kids take you somewhere else. Maybe you don't like the schools that your kids are in now. Maybe COVID happens and, you know, you don't like how the school's handling those policies. You know, there's all sorts of, sorts of unknowns, right, that, that might make you switch based on kids or work. So if you're somebody that's younger and you're not certain that you're going to stay in a place for a long time, that's where you really kind of lose the payoff because building a home is very, very painful. Um, as funny as that might, might, might sound, uh, especially right now, especially with, uh, with the market the way that it is and especially with things such as uh, supply chain issues and costs. So let me explain to you a little bit more why that is. So right now, the first thing you want to do, if you're going to build a home, uh, you can start looking for lots and it's a good idea to have an idea of what type of lot that you want. But of course, you're also going to need a builder as well. You're going to need, you know, that home to come from somewhere. Right now, most builders are backed up. Uh, a lot of builders that I talk to are like a year out at minimum. How long does it take to typically build a custom home? Usually about 12 months. How long does it take right now in 2022 when I'm shooting this? At least 15 months plus. 
there's a lot of unknowns, again, supply chain issues, unknown costs. So the timeline to build a home is very, very long. Uh, I have some friends that, uh, that are younger, that are still working, that have kids, and uh, they built a home. It, this is right around the start of COVID, actually. And uh, they were told it was going to take 12 months. It took closer to 16 months. Uh, they lived in a little tiny trailer on their property with three small children, um, you know, for, for 16 <laughs> nightmarish months, you know. Um, was it worth it? I don't know. But uh, the problem is, is it, it only really becomes worth it if you're going to stay in that home for a long period of time. If you're going to dedicate 24 to 30 plus months of your life just to, building a, to build a home, and then you end up moving two or three or even five years later, it's really probably not worth it. So the biggest thing when it comes to building a home is you want to make sure that that's going to be a place that you're going to stay for a long time because it's just not worth it to go through 24 to 36 months of pain and figuring out where are you going to live in the meantime, all the problems with building homes. And, and I'll, let me let me elaborate on that a little bit more. So when you build a home, typically the builder is not going to have a, a crew or a, or, or a company that's going to do everything to, from start to finish. They're going to subcontract things out, right? So whether that's the excavation or the roof or plumbing, electrical, whatever it may be, a lot of that stuff gets subcontracted out. And when you're building a home, there's a long process of getting permits and, and having everything in order. And once that order gets thrown off, everything gets pushed out. You know, one subcontractor not doing his job or not filing a permit. Somebody else I know, uh, they found out uh, after the fact or after they started their build that uh, they needed a sprinkler system in their house. They had no idea, the builder didn't know that, so the permit didn't get filed. So permit had to get filed had to account for that that pushes everybody else's timeline back out so there's a lot of things that have to line up when you're building a house uh, in order for everything to to go on time or to fall within the timeline that that you would expect and usually something is not going to work out within your timeline and it's going to push everything else back now you can imagine right now with supply chain issues uh, how that might really impact houses if you've looked at any new construction houses recently, you might notice a lot of garages being boarded up. Garage doors are on back order right now. Garage doors are really tough to get, you know, again, supply chain issues. Same thing with windows. So, and you can't always predict when you're talking about 12 months, you know, 20 months down the road, what things are gonna look like. So if you get with that builder and uh, the builder says, okay, we'll be ready 12 months down the road. It's gonna take at least 12 months that span of 24 months, there's a lot that can happen with you, with your builder, with the world that can really throw that timeline off. So that's why I say it really is a painful process to build a house and it really only becomes worth it if you're gonna stay in the house, probably for the rest of your life. Now with all that being said, if you do wanna buy a house, uh, if you do want to build a house, we will help you to do that. We can help you to find a builder. We can help you to pick out a lot. We've done it for other people. Um, a few considerations with lots. Uh, are you picking a piece of land that's completely undeveloped, that has no electric, no water, no sewer? Those are kind of the three big things. Or is that land in an area like a new subdivision where a lot of stuff has already been developed and that's already coming with the land? It's gonna be a lot more work if you're buying a piece of land that's totally undeveloped as opposed to a land that has those, some land that has those three things. So we'll help you if you do want to buy, uh, build uh, a new home. Just understand that it's going to be a long process. There's a lot of unexpected things, a lot of unexpected costs, probably going to take longer than you think. And the first steps are really kind of finding a builder and or piece of land that uh, the builder will build on. Last note on building, if you are somebody that's younger, and you do suspect that maybe you're not going to stay there forever and you might have to sell your home and you're like hey i, I just want to build my own home I don't, I don't care if it's you know a long process and there's going to be a lot of pain uh, going through that process the biggest thing that i would suggest that you want to keep in mind is that um, the piece of land that you choose is going to be very very important for your resale because land is non-fungible uh, meaning fungible meaning something can be replicated, it can be replaced, uh, it's not unique. Non-fungible meaning it is unique. 
if, uh, if anybody watching here is into cryptocurrency, or maybe you're not even in cryptocurrency, maybe you've heard that term NFT, stands for non-fungible token. Land was the original non-fungible thing, right? So uh, every piece of land is totally unique. So one piece of land that could be right next to another piece of land, uh, they could be the same size, right? There could be almost no difference in size, but you know, one might have some trees obstructing a view. One is just simply closer to something else, right? So no piece of uh, land can be replicated. Every piece of land is unique. And so when you build a home or even buy a home, choosing the right dirt, the right space, the right location is very, very important. That's why maybe if you've ever seen, if you're like searching on Zillow or something like that, looking at houses for sale, a common thing that uh, realtors will say is location, location, location. You see, that, and it's usually all in caps. You see that because in a lot of ways, um, location is more important than anything. And the location is actually what really makes the property itself valuable. So if you take a piece of uh, property that's in the middle of nowhere, let's just say somewhere in the Midwest, um, that's an acre, right? Um, or let's say a quarter acre, something that's maybe a little bit more common along the Oregon coast, might be $50,000 in the Midwest. It's gonna be 10 times that along the Oregon coast, especially if it has water views, you know? So you could get 10 somewhere else, you know, for the price of one here in Oregon. And that's because when you're closer to amenities, you're closer to shopping, you're closer to schools, you have water views, whatever it may be, that makes the land more valuable. The home itself, and I know sometimes people kind of, um, this might sound confusing because all we hear in uh, the news these days is, is home values go up, 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 right? Which they do. Home values, um, there are very few times in the past where, where homes didn't go up in value, but the house itself, the structure, homes actually depreciate. So a brand new home a year from now is actually less uh, worth less than it was a year ago. It's the land that's appreciating. Once you take a piece of land, you add electric to it uh, that's undeveloped, it's worth more money. You add sewer and water to it, it's worth more money. You put a structure on it, it's worth more money. There are structures around it, it's worth more money, it becomes more desirable, there's more amenities, you've got schools nearby that are desirable that other people want to move into to go to those schools with their kids, right? Those are all the things that make a land uh, and a property more and more uh, valuable. So it's really important when you're, whether you're building or even buying a home, if you expect to uh, resell that home at some point in the future, the location is very, very important. That's the one thing you just can't fix, right? If, uh, if the house itself, you know, if something in the house depreciates, whether it's little stuff like sinks and, you know, windows, uh, seals cracking, stuff like that. Maybe it's something major. The roof needs to be replaced. The furnace needs to be replaced. All that stuff can be replaced because it's fungible. The land can't be replaced, right? You can't change the land. So that's one of the biggest things. If you're going to buy a house and, and, and build a house uh, and you expect to resell it at some point in the future, really, really want to consider the location and how desirable is that location so that when you go to sell it, somebody else is going to want it. Ideally, a lot of people are going to want it, so uh, you can get the most for it. All right, so I, I hope that helps you to kind of think through how to find the right property for you along the Oregon coast. We get calls from people that, like I mentioned, uh, are coming from out of state. Some people have never been here before. Some people have only been here a few times. So I hope some of this information will help you to maybe kind of understand and kind of narrow down your search. But again, the best thing you're going to want to do is uh, reach out to us, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link below in the description. And if this video helped you, give us a thumbs up. Uh, let's us know that we're doing a good job. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure and subscribe, make sure and tap that bell. You can feel free to comment below in the uh, comment section as well too we reply to pretty much, pretty much all the comments and if you have any kind of input on um, where you're looking or how to look for a house or any kind of questions at all go ahead and put those in the comments and you'll hear back from us all right everyone take care i know you told your friend you're not okay and tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to